I think it's important to stress that all of the views coming out of me are my views and I don't see them as scientific. They just happen to be what I think or what I see or reflections on stuff like that. Um, and there's no law. Just because I think something doesn't mean I'm correct. It just, it's just really, I think it's very important that you always have different um, perspectives or differing perspectives and you use those to sort of form an opinion about various things. And so, there is something that I would like to talk about, an observation, and it has to do with queue jumping. I believe queue jumping should be just banned. It should be, uh, well, you can't, I'm not going to get into trouble and claim it is a human right to not be jumped in the queue. But queue jumping causes a huge amount of stress. So if you think, if you look at the action, it's just one person wriggling in in front of others. And the result can be tremendous chaos. It can even be a scuffle, a fight, or something like that. And I remember the thing that really made me think a lot about queue jumping, because I've seen it throughout my life, just as you have, was during the COVID uh, period. When we'd go to the market, they had rearranged the market so that all of the stalls were just on one side. And so people would queue on the other side. If you remember, we needed to keep... Um, one and a half meters from one uh, from each other. So you'd have these people, some with masks, some not. On one side, uh, on the other side, you'd have the market stalls. And uh, the deal was only essential items could be sold. So you'd have uh, foodstuffs, of course. But there were also flowers, which I guess uh, <laughs> flowers helped uh, make everybody feel happy again. So anyway, there we are queuing on one Saturday. And uh, this lady, she decides, well, why should I queue? <laughs> and the thing about this particular lady is that it was not the first time I'd seen her do this. You know, we had watched her and we, it, it was even a sort of a joke. It had become a sort of uh, inside joke to see, is she going to try and jump the queue again? because she was very sneaky about it. The thing is that you could see her planning to jump the queue. And also, because of the new arrangement, it was impossible to... You had to be very, very courageous to uh, just blatantly jump in front of everyone else. And this lady, I wouldn't say she was courageous. She was inventive, because what she... Her, her shtick was this. She was... She had a walking stick. She was... I don't know, 70-ish or so. She didn't look frail, but that wasn't the point. The thing is that she would come, sort of pretend to be inspecting the goods on offer, and in this case it was the cheese store, so she did wonderful cheeses, may I say. So she'd sort of be inspecting them, and suddenly, as soon as a gap appeared, that is, one of the attendants had finished with a customer, she'd jump in, and there'd be this uproar. And people would say, oh, whatever. And then she'd look in that sweet way. Oh, I didn't know there was a queue. And this BS worked for a while. But I think eventually you catch on. It's the same lady. Every week she does the same thing. She did it with the vegetables. She did it with the cheese. And so it seems that on this day in particular, we the people rose up and said, no more. No more queue jumping. And so when she went to jump the queue, she tried the usual thing. Oh, I didn't know. And then somebody shouted, yeah, you didn't know last week as well, and this and that. And there all these comments being fired at her. And so she sort of disappears off grumbling and moaning. And uh, I wonder what was going on in her head. I think there was a general sense of disappointment because this particular plan had failed. And it had not just failed, it had been destroyed. So she could not come again with the same technique. My thing was always, I often wonder, what, how does that work? Because I've accidentally jumped a queue once where I wasn't thinking, so I was, hey, there's a queue. I said, oh, sorry, you, you moved. But I've never planned. I've never come up with a queue jumping strategy, even though I see them happening left and right. So I often wonder, what is, how does that happen in the head? It's like, okay, I need to get this thing. I see all of these people. And I do not care about those people. I need to get it first. And so you make your plans, you move in. I know some people are very, um, they have a kind of aggression 
in the way they move in that seems to challenge you to do something. And most people, we're not really out for trouble. We're out for justice. Um, but I don't know, the others, you see sort of shifty-eyed moves, people slip in. I mentioned that on the um, episode where I talked about how people get onto trains. So I don't know what this thing is about queue jumping. If you are a queue jumper, ask yourself, why do I do it? What do you enjoy it? Is there is is the idea to jump the queue and not be shouted at or not be noticed? Do you get points? Is there a secret um, uh, organization of queue jumpers and you trade queue jumping stories? I don't know. I'm curious about this. So hopefully um, the next time I see a queue jumper, I'll actually ask them if the mood allows, because often the shame of being caught is so great that you really don't want somebody coming up to you and uh, interviewing you about the reasons for your uh, queue jumping. We'll see.